Okay, next one is labia dental. Labia dental is when the lower leaf comes in contact with the upper front teeth. For example, if the and the okay. So in labia dental, meaning to say the lower leaf and the upper front teeth comes together or it touch each other to produce sound. That's labia dental, just like this picture. Okay, yeah, this one. So I am sorry if you can hear dogs. Okay, so anyway, let's continue. Alveolar. Alveolar is the sound. It's created when the tip of the tongue is raised near the back of the upper front teeth. Okay, so if you can remember, I told you last time that alveolar ridge is located behind the upper front teeth, right? Just like this photo. Yeah, so this is the alveolar ridge. When you say alveolar in point of articulation, the tip of the tongue is raised near the alveolar ridge or near or behind the upper front teeth. Okay. So your tongue position must be like this in producing alveolar sound, like th, th voiceless and th voice, like think, thought, for voice, this, that, those, okay? So that is alveolar. Next is post-alveolar. Post-alveolar is when the tongue is slightly behind the alveolar reads as the r sound, okay? So if your tongue is here in the alveolar reads, in the alveolar, in post-alveolar, since your tongue is a little bit backward in the alveolar reads, so, so your tongue must be here if you are pronouncing post-alveolar, okay? So next one is palatal. Palatal is when the tongue is arched towards the palate, like the consonant. So we need to say your tongue is like this, like it is curved. And then it is against the palate or the hard palate. Hard palate in Tagalog is also yung ngala-ngala, roof of our tongue. That is hard palate. So if it's palatal, the tongue is arched on the hard palate, okay? And then velars, when the back of the tongue is against the soft palate or the velum, as when creating the k sound, okay? So if the palatal, we have the hard palate. In velars, we have soft palate. The reason why it's called velars, it's because soft palate is also called velum, okay? So velars, just like this in the picture, the back of your tongue is against the soft palate or the velum. Okay, so if you can notice, if you try to produce sounds like k, 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 it's the back of your tongue touching the soft palate, right? Um, as well as the example g, 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 that is also an example of velar. Okay, and next to lastly is glottal. Glottal is when the sound of air, when friction is produced, as it goes through the glottis, like the sound. So for glottal, it is like simply giving breath. So um, friction is produced when the air goes through the glottis. Okay, so that's why you can create the sound. Okay, so that is all for our review in the point of articulation. Another review is the manner of articulation. So in manner of articulation, we have six manner of articulation, stop, fricative, affricate, we also have nasal, lateral, and lastly, semi-vowel. So the six. First one is stop. Stop. Again. So stop is uh, created when the passage of the breath is being blocked. Okay. Meaning to say, um, you stop the airflow coming out from your mouth. Okay. So, for example, bilabial stop. So we have the. Okay. So once you. You are blocking the passage of the breath, right? No air is coming out from your mouth. And then before you release the air from your mouth, you will put a pressure before releasing it. Like, okay, so that's the stops. Another one is b, b, okay? So there's a sudden stop on the airflow or on the passage of the breath. There's a pressure before you release it. 
okay, before you release the air from your mouth, okay? Another one, alveolar stop, d, d, velar stop, like k, g, okay? You can notice, while you are pronouncing these sounds, you can really notice that there's a stop, right? Like b, b, t, d, okay? There's a stop in the airflow, okay? So that is stop. Next, manner of articulation is fricatives. Fricatives are created when the air is not completely stopped, but goes through with a hissing sound or friction. So here in fricatives, unlike the stop, the air cannot flow, right? Unless you release it. In fricatives, although something is blocking the air, the air can still pass through your mouth, okay? So that's why it creates a hissing sound. For example, labia dental fricative. We have the, yeah, so there's a hissing sound. So in this um, sound, the, the teeth is blocking the air. But as you can notice, the air can still pass through, right? It is not completely blocked. That is fricatives, okay? So according here, in fricatives, vocal tracts, are only partially closed, thus allowing air to pass through, okay? So one of the characteristics of fricatives, when you hear it, is the hissing sound, okay? So most of the time, if you hear fricative sound, there's a hissing sound, okay? Mm. Mm. Okay, so these are the examples. Uh, dental fricatives, alveolar, post-alveolar, palatal and glottal fricatives, okay? Next one, affricates. Affricates can be created when stops and fricatives are combined, okay? So meaning, affricates is the combination of stops and fricatives. So there's a stop. In this affricate sound, there's a stop and there's also a hissing sound, okay? So for example, uh, this one. The example alveolar fricative, the first one. So we have here the t, right? T is a stop, if you can remember, t. And then this symbol, the sound of this is sh. Sh. So you combine t and sh. The result will be affricate ch. So it sounds like ch, ch, ch. Okay, so there's a stop and there's also a hissing sound. That is African, okay? Another example is this one. So we have here this one. So first is the D. D is a stop. D. The other one is this one. This is voice F, like G, G. Measure, television, that's voice F. So you combine D and G, the uh, result will be the African J, J, J. Okay, so there's a stop also and there is a hissing sound. That is African. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Okay, next, let's move on with the next manner of articulation, which is nasals. So nasals is the easiest one to remember. Nasals nose. The air is coming out through your nose and not on the mouth. That's why it's nasals. So nasals can be produced when the air passes through the nose and not the mouth. Example is bilabial nasal, like mmm, 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 right? So meaning the air is coming out on your nose. Alveolar nasal, so it is mmm, mmm, okay? The air is still passing through the nose, not the mouth. Velar nasal, like mmm, 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 okay? So that is nasal. Simply the air, when you are pronouncing these sounds, the air is simply passing through the nose and not in your mouth, okay? Next. Lateral, okay. So it's easy also because it only has one example. Lateral. Lateral sounds are created when the air is stopped by the tip of the tongue, okay? So if you pronounce the L sound, okay? L. If you try to pronounce it, uh, the air is stopping. I mean, the tongue is stopping the air, right? But the air can still pass through. 
So in lateral, the air can pass in one side of the tongue. Let's say this is your tongue. The air can pass in one side of the tongue or it's either on both sides of the tongue. Okay. So if you can notice, if you try to pronounce the L sound, the air can pass through, right? Sa magkabilang dila or in one side of the tongue. Okay. So that's lateral. Okay. Last one. Last um, manner of articulation is semi-vowels. Semi-vowels are consonants, okay? So please remember, semi-vowels are consonants. They are not vowels. They are, co they are called semi-vowels because they sound vowel-like, okay? That's why it's semi-vowels. So there is no friction made when making the sound. So meaning it's a free airflow, the semi-vowels. Uh, friction only happens when there is a blockage of air. So since it's a free airflow, the air is flowing from your lungs to your mouth freely without a blockage. That's semi-vowels, okay? So for example, in bilateral, we have the w, w, and then palatal sound, we have y, 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 okay? So that is semi-vowels. And that is all for the manner of articulation. Stops, fricatives, affricates, nasals, pal ah, sorry, lateral and semi vowels. Okay, so those are the six manner of articulation. So now let's move on with the topic that we weren't able to discuss last meeting, which is about rhythm of English. We also have, we are also going to discuss about intonation of English and the variance that affects speech. Okay, so let's start. With the first one, the rhythm of English. The rhythm of English, rhythm is created through the recurrence of unstressed and stressed syllables. Now, what is stress syllables? The stress is a sound we put on a syllable or word to make it stand out from the group. So, stress is giving emphasis on a part of a word. Okay, so stress in language is like this. You give emphasis on the part of the word. But if you say stress generally, so we mean to say that it's a stress that we feel, okay? So in language, it's not like that. Stress is like this symbol. And if you see this symbol in a word, that means that is the part where you have to give more emphasis when you are pronouncing it, okay? So that is stress. Okay, next one. There, there are three elements in the rhythm of English, namely force, speech, and duration. Force is, it shows the intensity or loudness of our voice. Pitch shows the tune, and duration is the length of the vowel sound, whether it be short vowel sound or long vowel sound. When we say uh, duration, it's not like the a uh, and a, like, a is long vowel sound and A is short vowel sound. When we say duration, it's like E is long vowel sound, like E. So they are both E. They are both the vowel I. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's the vowel I. But in pronunciation, we have long vowel, which is E. And we have short vowel sound like E. Okay, so that is duration. Okay, next, let's move on with the rules, okay? So the following slides will be all about rules in putting stress on words. So please listen carefully, okay? So here in the rules, you will see how important stress, okay? How important stress in language, okay? So most words, let's have the first rule. Most words with two syllables are stressed on the first syllable, okay? So let's analyze the example. For example, the word always. Okay, um, let me ask Mark Luis Montoya. Uh, Mark Luis, the question is easy. How many syllables does always does the word always have? Ilang syllable yon, Mark Luis? Okay, let's see if you're listening. Okay, again, how many syllables does always does the word always have? How many syllables? Okay. Two. 
two. Okay, but my question to the mark, Luis. So it's two. It's sure two. Okay, so that's right. There are two syllables. It's all and wait. Always. It's two syllable words. Okay, medyo malag po, ma'am. Okay, so ako ba yon ang malag or is it you? Okay, so tell me if I'm lagging. My voice is lagging, ha? So that I can close my camera. But I guess hindi naman. Kasi usually, naglalag ako if lag ang video. Ah, okay. So it's on your part. Okay, so that's fine. As long as you're listening. Okay, so that's right, Mark Luis. It's always. So according to the rule, since it's a two-syllable word, where is the stress? Is it in all or in ways? Where is the stress, Denzel? Can you try to answer? In the word always, nasa ng stress? Or anyone who can answer. Where is the stress in the word always? Follow the rule. Most words with two syllables are stressed on the first syllable. So in the example, always, where is the stress? Yes, Anthea? All po. Yes, that's right. Okay. So meaning to say it will be read as always. So nasa all ang emphasis. So it's not always, right? It's always. Same with the other example. Lesson, river, batter. Okay. So next, next rule is compound nouns. Compound nouns is a noun. It's words composed of two nouns combined together. For example, the lamp and the shade. Lamp is a noun, shade is a noun. You combine them together, it creates another meaning. So that's a compound noun. What's the rule if it's a compound noun? The stress is on the first word. Okay. So remember that syllable is different from word. So if it's a compound noun, the syllable is on the first word, not on the first syllable. Okay. So here we have lampshade. What is the first word? It's lamp. So there's the stress. Lampshade, armchair, doorknob, playground. Okay. So that is applicable for all compound nouns. Okay. So next. Okay. So it, if it's hard to, for you to determine a compound noun, so you just have to remember that a compound noun is composed of, composed of two nouns that is combined together. So if this is noun combined, if this is two nouns combined together, therefore it's a compound noun. And then you apply and <clears throat> sorry, and then you apply the rule. Okay. So next. Okay, next would be compound verbs. Compound verbs, if it's a compound verb, the stress is placed on the second word, okay? So if it's a compound noun, the stress is on the first word. If it's a compound verb, uh, the stress is on the second word, okay? Well, of course, verbs, compound verbs, it is composed of verbs combined together, okay? So under its verb, go is verb. So you combine them, it's a compound verb. Out is a verb, do is a verb, you combine them, it's a compound verb. Okay? So the stress is on the second syllable. Undergo, outdo, overdose, overflow. Okay? So that is compound verbs. All compound verbs, the stress is on the second word. Okay? Next one is um reflexive pronouns or intensive reflexive pronouns so reflexive pronouns is always characterized as words ending in self and selves okay so all pronouns like himself itself ourselves yeah and so all of them they are applicable in this rule so what's the rule the stress is on the second syllable okay syllable for example yourself herself themselves okay so that is for all reflexive pronouns okay next numbers that end in teen and numbers that end in ty okay so for those number ending in teen like 15 16 17 18 okay 
So the stress is on the second syllable. Okay. All numbers ending in teen, the stress is on the second syllable. All numbers ending in ty, the stress is on the first syllable. Okay. So this is done to distinguish the difference between the two. Okay. So they have different stress. So this helps us to determine whether the word or the number is 18 or the number ends in ty. Okay. Because we often misheard these numbers. Like if it said that 13, we misheard it that as it is 30, right? Kasi pareho lang sila ng beginning. Thir, thir, 13, 13, 13, okay? So if you are very much aware the stress of the word, you will know how to pronounce it appropriately. And at the same time, you will know how to dis differentiate these two if you hear it, diba? So if it's 10, the stress is on the second syllable, 13. If it's T-Y, 30, 13, 30, okay? So that's the difference between the two. Okay, next rule. Okay, here, functional shift from noun to verb. Yeah, so as you can see here, we have same spelling of words, right? They are the same, but they differ in on how we pronounce it. They differ on the stress, okay? So stress help us in this part in order to determine if a word is a noun and if a word is a verb. In terms of written language, um, of course, we cannot uh, put much stress because we pronounce unless we put the symbol. But here in uh, our example, these two are uh, pronounced differently. So if it's a noun, stress is always on the first syllable. If it's a verb, the stress is always on the second syllable. Okay, so let's have the example. The noun present. Okay, the stress is on the first syllable, which is in Pre, present, like I would like to give you a present this Christmas. So it's present, okay? So next verb, the next one is a verb, which is present, okay? So it's present, present, okay? So when you say present, it's an action, it's a verb, like my classmate is going to present in the class, okay? So that's the difference. Next uh, example is permit, okay? So permit, it's a noun, okay? Permit, the stress is in the per, permit. The verb is permit, okay? Permit, permit, okay? So when we say permit, by definition, it is like a document allowing you to do something. But if it's permit, it is also, it allows you to do something, but it's just an action word, okay? Like, okay, I permit you to do this. Like, okay, I allow you to do this, okay? So that's permit. Next is subject. Subject, a noun, a verb is subject. Subject, subject, okay? So subject is like, subject in school or subject in a sentence subject in a conversation like a topic okay next subject is by definition it will be like it will pass through something for example the law is subjected for approval so meaning to say the law will pass through for approval okay so that is subject next one is rebel rebel noun verb is rebel okay rebel 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 it's a person it's a person or a group of person or a group of people that is against of something like against of an administration against the government like yeah rebel okay it's a person and then when we say rebel, it's an action that shows that they are against something. Like 
they are rebelling for something. Okay? Like, for example, um, a lot of people are rebelling in front of the Malacanya. Okay, so like that. So it's like eh, they are against of something. They are fighting for something. Okay, so that is rebel. Okay, next last word is record. Record is a noun. The verb is record. Record, record. Okay, record in noun like my teacher has a record of my absences. And then for this one, record. Record means uh, I would like to record this virtual class or I am recording this class or this virtual class, okay? So that is for this rule, okay? So again, if it's a noun, the stress is on the first syllable. If it's a verb, the stress is on the second syllable, okay? Next one. Next rule is for suffix. What if a suffix is added to a word? What is the rule? When a suffix is added to a word, a newly formed word will let, will, uh, sorry will retain the stress on the first syllable as the root word. Okay? So at the first syllable, yan. I'm sorry. Nagkulang. Okay, this is first. Okay. Okay, I'll make it short. Uh, okay, the stress is on the first syllable. Okay, it's hard to write. Okay, the stress is on the first syllable after the word. Okay, so we all know that the suffix is added at the end of the word. Prefix is added at the beginning of a word. Suffix is at the end. So the root word here is Mary. Then a suffix is added, which is meant. So the word became merriment. So what's the rule? It will retain the stress on the first syllable as the root word. Okay. So the stress is still the same. It's in the first syllable like me. And also here, me. Okay. So it will be merry, merriment, same. Interest, interesting. So this one is cloud cloud so it's not cloudy cloud cloudy so nasa stress nasa cloud next is honest honesty teach teacher okay so that is only applicable for words that have suffix okay so next one Okay, words that end in T I O N and S I O N, I C E call and I T Y. With these words always stress on the syllable that comes before the last syllable. So all the words ending here. Okay, so this is the rule. Uh, the stress is on the syllable that comes before the last syllable. For example, the word logical. Logical is a three syllable word. Logical. What is the last syllable? It's cal. So the uh, rule is the stress is before the last syllable, right? So what is the syllable before the last syllable? It's the G. So nandun yung stress. So to make it short, all words ending here, the, the stress is always before the last syllable, okay? So that is for the truth. Okay, so you have to remember all words ending here, okay? All words ending here, the rule is before the last syllable. The stress is before the last syllable, okay? And then last rule for um, stress, some words have two stress syllables, the primary stress and the secondary stress. Primary stress is always uh, louder compared to secondary stress. Louder like it's in primary stress, you give more emphasis than secondary stress, okay? So these are some examples. Administrative, elementary, education, preparatory, secondary, organization, okay? So that is the end of the rule for this stress, okay? So that is all for stress. Now let's move on with another topic, which is about intonation of English. Intonation of English refers to the music of language 
and it refers to the technical term for tune, that's intonation. So when we say intonation, we always hear rising and falling intonation, right? So rising and falling or rising and falling intonation. When you are giving command or factual sentences, you apply rising and falling intonation. The voice rises and then goes down at the end of the sentence. This intonation can also be applied to open-ended questions, questions that is not answerable by yes or no. That is open-ended questions. Now, when do we use rising intonation? The rising of the voice at the end of the sentence signals a question answerable by yes or no. So all questions answerable by yes or no, you apply rising intonation. For example, are you listening? That is a question answerable by yes or no. You apply rising intonation. So we have here the basic tones of English, or we could say levels of tones in English. One is for low, two is for norm, normal, three is high, four is extra high. One, two, three are commonly used tones. Four is used when strong emotions are expressed, like you are too happy, too angry, scared, excited, you often use extra high tone. Okay, so let's discuss rising, falling, and rising intonation. Rising, falling intonation, it is normal voice, then it will rise and then it will go down. That's why it's rising, falling intonation. So here uh, we have the first one, the slide or inflection. So here is a normal tone, good, good, okay, normal tone, and then it will rise. So if you can remember in the level of tones, normal is two, okay? And then it will rise, it will become three, which is high. And then it will not suddenly go down or drop down the tone, okay? Yung biglang bababa ang tone, no. It will be inflected or slight. So here, uh, in terms of tone, you create like a wave tone, like good day, okay? So good, and then it will rise day okay so like a wave good day good afternoon okay so that's how you pronounce it so in the slider inflection there is a wave on your tone okay so that's why it is inflection okay number two is the drop or shift the drop or shift is the sudden low tone okay from rise it will not gradually low down it will suddenly lower down the tone okay so from normal tone, which is two, it will rise, and then it will suddenly drop down. Okay, big lang mababa. So here, as you can see, hindi pan tayong line meaning as sorry, meaning to say, um, this uh name is lower tone. Okay, so we have here two, this is three, and this is one low tone. Okay, so it's good is normal then rise more ning good morning okay so that is the drop or shift good morning same with the other one good evening okay so normal rise and then low tone okay so that is for rising falling intonation next would be rising intonation okay so rising intonation it happens when your pitch is reached from one pitch to a higher pitch, okay? So for example, are you married? From normal tone, it will rise and it will not drop down. It will remain rising intonation, okay? Am I right? Can you see that? Is he all right? Okay, all rising intonation. If you can remember, rising intonation is used also when um, you are giving answer utterances answerable by SM. Next. Often intonation emphasizes emotions such as fear, excitement, anger, etc. Okay, so sometimes when we are experiencing too high emotion, we often use rising intonation or extra high intonation. Okay, so wait, hurry, are you leaving us? Okay, so we use intonation. Okay, next, so intonation is not limited to short utterances. As you can notice, these are all short utterances or short sentences. Non-final intonation is used with long sentences or long utterances. Non-final intonation vary according to the speaker. 
So it depends on the speaker whether he or she is going to um, have a high tone or a low tone. Okay, just like this example. Non-final intonation is also used in utterances that is not yet complete or it's not yet certain, not sure. Okay, that is non-final intonation. Okay, so next one. Okay, that is all, I guess. Yeah, that is all for intonation. Last topic is variance that affects speech. This is the last topic for the tools in effective oral communication. Variance that affects speech, it's three, aspiration, syllabic consonants, and vowel -like. The first one is aspiration, the p, t, and k. So in aspiration, what is aspiration first? Aspiration is the explosive release of air after the breath comes in contact with parts of speech mechanism. So in order for you to determine if a word is aspirated or not, you can use this, put your hand sa tapat ng mouth, and then you pronounce p or pool. So if you can uh, feel the air on your palm or on your hand, that means it is aspirated. Okay, so compare how p to k are aspirated when found in the initial position and when they are found in the middle or final position. So we have here initial, which means the p to k is placed at the beginning. Middle, it is placed at the middle. Final, it is placed at the last part of the word. So we have pool, okay? Pool, kill, cool, table, partner, push. So it's all aspirated if you apply that method. It's all aspirated. When the p, t, k is placed as the initial part of the word, the word is aspirated or the p, t, k is aspirated. Now let's continue with nijo. Let's um, pronounce words testing, water, matter, company, market, bakery, okay? So if you can notice, it's not aspirated. You cannot feel an air. You cannot feel the explosive air is released, right? So same with final. You cannot also feel dip, stop, look, think, help, think, okay? So it's not aspirated again, okay? Just like middle and final. So um, another one, yes. Yeah. When positioned in the middle and final parts of a word, the p, t, and k are not aspirated. So, pag ang p, t, k ay nasa gitna at nasa last part of the word, it is not aspirated. Same with skill, feel, and feel, it is not aspirated also. This also happens with the voice counterpart, sounds like the b, d, g. It is not aspirated also, okay? So next one, last is syllabic consonants, okay? So syllabic consonants are those consonants which are pronounced without a vowel in an unstressed syllable. They occur only when the stressed syllables end in t, d, or n, and is followed by a and n, okay? So in syllabic consonants, the vowel became absent when the stress syllable ends in t, and it is followed by a n. Okay. So for example, the word cotton. Okay. So cotton, we have the stress syllable cot. It ends in t, and then it is, or the last part of the word is n. Right. So in this part, the cotton the O became absent in the middle of T and O, right? So it became absent. You, in, when we are pronouncing these words, we do not emphasize the O sound, right? We do not say cotton, right? So it sounds weird. Cotton, give me the cotton, right? So it's either cotton or cotton, okay? So give me the cotton. So it's like you combine the T and N. So that is the syllabic consonants, okay? Same with the other example. 
sudden, middle, sudden, general, didn't, little, final, accident, hospital, forgotten, hadn't, etc. Okay, and the other word. Yeah, so all of these words are syllabic consonants. Okay, so next one, third um, variant that affects speech is the vowel length. This is the last one. So vowel length refers to the length of time given to pronounce a vowel sound. So it, that's why it's vowel length. How long or how short the vowel is pronounced in a word. It is the duration or quantity of time rather than the quality or difference in sound, okay? So it refers to duration, okay? So if you can remember, duration refers to vowel length, how short and how long the vowel sound is. So vowel length may be altered by two things. It's stress and two syllable structure. So the first one is stress. The stress goes with the length of the vowel sound, okay? So let's have the first one. Example, can't you swim? Okay, so if you can notice, in the first sentence, the vowel in the word can't is pronounced shorter. It's not can't he swim, like it's always can't he swim, right? And the other sentence, no, he can't. Can't, oh yeah, the can't is pronounced longer compared on the first sentence. Okay, so that is success. Next one is syllable structure. Syllable structure is like you are pronouncing the word based on its syllable structure. Okay, so for this one, this can also shorten a stress syllable as compared to stress, which lengthens the syllable sound. Okay, so here we have the meal, the seat, the heel, the seed. Okay. Another thing for syllable structure is this. Okay, so words are divided into their component syllables. So we people, we usually pronounce a word based on its syllable. For example, handkerchief. Okay, so we pronounce it the way or based on, sorry, based on its syllable structure. Diba? We say handkerchief. So it's hand her chip right that is what we always pronounce okay same with bakery we pronounce it based on its syllable okay so sometimes we say handkerchief okay bakery okay so um it is also or it affects the speech also because not all words or yeah not all words is pronounced based on its syllable, right? But we people, we pronounce it usually based on its syllable, okay? So that's why it also contradicts the stress, okay? Because the stress is not pronounced based on its syllable. It is pronounced based on its emphasis or in the stress, okay? So that is all for um, syllable structure. And this is the end of uh, my discussion for this module. Yeah, so this is the end. That is all for the tools in effective oral communication. So this is so long. It's like we discussed this module for like three meetings, right? The first meeting, I discussed the phonemic chart. Second meeting, I discussed the organs of speech. And then third meeting is this. So third meeting, that's how long, or three meetings, that's how long this module is, okay? So for the next um, topic or for the next meeting, it will be all about application of all the things that you have learned in this module, okay? So next meeting, no discussions. It will be all about practicing your um, pronunciation, your speaking English, okay? So it's application of what you have learned in this module, okay? So that is all for today. Section 56, um, we finally finished this module and we can jump on to the next uh, module, okay? So I suggest next meeting, you study again the phonemic chart because the phonemic chart will help you to pronounce words correctly, okay? 
because on the next module we all, we will often use the symbols that we have in our uh, phonemic chart okay so for example um okay i will use a whiteboard okay so for example we have this symbol okay here and then we have a yan okay so if you can remember if this is the symbol and then you see a word like it has it you know that it's pronounced e long e but if it's like this like a capital i it's shorter it okay so I hope you have you familiar yourself, you familiarize yourself with the phonemic chart. Okay. There. Okay. So that will be all for today's section 66. Before anything else, do you have any questions? Please raise your hand. Do you have any questions? None? Okay. Okay, I guess no question. So I will end the meeting. Okay. See you again next meeting. Please study the uh, phonemic chart. Okay, goodbye.